saw coming down from God out of heaven. The walls are of jasper, the gates are of pearl, and the streets of pure gold. He tells of a pure river of life that flows from the throne. And when we have reached that beautiful place, we'll know as we're known. Let's meet by the river over on that beautiful shore. Let's meet by the river where loved ones dwell who've gone on before. If you leave here first, just wait by the river If I leave you here That's where you'll find me Let's meet by the river Over on that beautiful shore If you leave me standing here on this earth Just wait by the river It's such a good place for us to meet over there and after I find you let's go see Jesus then let's go find our dad and mother let's meet by the river over on that beautiful shore let's meet by the river over on that beautiful shore Let's meet by the river where loved ones dwell who've gone on before. If you leave here first, just wait by the river. If I leave you here, that's where you'll find me. Let's meet by the river over on that beautiful shore. Let's meet by the river over on that beautiful show. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 5. That's where we'll be starting. Um, we'll be going a few other verses um, in Revelation chapter 10. And um, I was watching a, uh, a... I can't remember his name, but he's pastoring a, a Bellevue Baptist where Adrian Rogers used to be. And he he was resigning. I think he's resigned now. But I was watching him here a while back in a in a podcast, and he uh, said something that they learned in seminary school. And this has my, been my goal ever since I heard this, um, which is a good thing, I think. Um, but he said there was three things that they taught them in seminary school when preaching a message, and one of them was to explain what you were preaching. You know, or give an explanation of it and give an illustration of it, you know, and and also give an application of, of what you're preaching. And, um, I've been trying to, I tried to do that the last time I was, I was in the nursing home, I believe it was, and, and I, I, if, if I don't do nothing else, I want you to understand what the Bible's saying um, and, and to get it, you know. You've heard Brother Derek say that before. We need to get what the Word of God is saying to us and um, I thank God that we're allowed here at Upper Peachtree to be on the radio. Um, I, I know Derek usually mentions all the radio stations and stuff like that. And don't forget we've got a website, um, UpperPeachtreeBaptistChurch.com. You can go and listen to all the messages um, that's being preached and watch the ones on Sunday mornings. Um, and look at the things that's going on in the church, um, announcements or whatnot on the website. Thank God for Brother Jimbo and for Brother Johnny for doing that, um, doing the radio ministry and doing all the recording and all the internet and stuff. What a blessing it is to have that ability. But in our Bibles this morning, as we turn to Ephesians chapter 5, I want to try to uh, go line by line and precept by precept, as Derek would say. And there are some um, important things to hear before we get to the actual verse that I want to focus on. And that, that, that verse is over on uh, verse 16. It says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
Um, and I don't know about you, but I've come to realize more and more nowadays, uh, recently, um, that we are running out of time. Um, and not one of us in here can say that we've got a lifetime ahead of us because we really don't. We don't know what, the, what tomorrow holds. We know who holds tomorrow, but praise God, we don't know what the future holds. And, um, but what we need to do is make the best of the time that God's given us today. And I believe that's what Paul was writing to the Ephesus here about um, this morning. In, in verse 1, we'll start there. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You know, when I was growing up, and my mama can probably contest to this some of this, but Maybe not all the time. I, I tried my best to, to do what my mama told me to do and to follow my dad and my mom and t the guidance that they give me. Um, but he's saying here, be followers of God as dear children. You know, when we were kids, we tried our best to please our mom and daddy the best we know how, you know, as children. When we got a little older, we thought we knew it all and we tried to go on our way and, and God proved us wrong that we didn't know it all, you know. It says, "In walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. You see how that's going back to the Sunday school lesson this morning. There's so much in this, um, these verses that goes, points back to that. But God Himself loved us through Jesus Christ. He says, And walk in love as Christ also loved us and hath given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. See, it? if we if we did give our own selves, our lives, Lord, it, it would not do justice to what Jesus Christ did because we're sinners. If we was to die, try to die in place of one another's sins, it wouldn't pay for one sin at all. It's only Christ Jesus that could do that. But we are to live the life and we're to walk in love as Christ loved us, it says. It says in verse 3, and you know why? I thank God the Word of God always explains itself. It don't just leave you hanging like a, some kind of novel does. It will, it will give the Word that you need to hear with it. It says, but fornication... And if you don't understand what that is, that's any kind of sexual act outside of marriage. Okay? Um, in other words, that's living like you're married, but you're not married. You know. It says, In all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. In other words, he don't want he don't want none of this stuff to be mentioned about you as children of God especially since you've become a Christian and God is sanctifying you, you need to do away with these things and get rid of them. You know, the Bible says to mortify or put to death the deeds of the flesh, you know. It says neither filthiness nor foolish talking or nor jesting. And I looked up that word jesting uh, yesterday and jesting means either joking or mocking. You know, we ought not to never mock nothing of God. We ought to always make sure that we're not never talking in a jokingly manner about God and about His people. But we ought to, it says on that latter part of that verse, it says, but rather giving thanks. <coughs> giving of thanks. In other words, we ought to thank God that God's given us a Savior. We ought to thank God that God's given us a church. We ought to thank God that He's given us His Spirit. You know, his word to lead and guide and direct us. For this you know, verse 5, and this is the verse that was mentioned in the Sunday school lesson. It says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And that last. If you'll read right over that last commandment, it says, Thou shalt not covet. And the Bible just got through saying is, is if you have any of that stuff, if you're any of those, 
a covetous man, it says, is an adulterer. And it, I heard Adrian Rogers preach a message on thou shalt not covet. How everybody thinks that's the least of the Ten Commandments, but it's the last of the ten. But if you covet, you've broken the very first one. In other words, you've put something above God and you've broken that commandment. So, And the Bible says if you, if you break the least of these, that you've broken them all. You know, you, you can't just, you know, you can't uh, try to persuade somebody thinking, well, I've done this, you know, but I, I didn't do that. You know, that one commandment, you know, you're guilty of all. It, he goes on and says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Don't, don't be deceived. Uh, there's a lot of people that are so deceived uh, of the things of this world and the, and the people of this world and the, the workers of the devil are blinding people left and right of the truth. It says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. In other words, get away from people like that. Get away from the crowd like that. And I, and I love these uh, upcoming verses. In, in my Bible it says, Walk in walk as children of light, and you know we are to be able to be able to be out here in the in the public, wherever it might be, especially in the house of God. We are to be a light to people that are around us. It says, "For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light." He said, one time. You and me and all of us here were in darkness. We were children of darkness. But when we come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we became part of the light. We, we became the light. You know, the light of the world. It says, but now are ye light in the Lord. Not, not that we got this light from the world, but we are the light of the Lord. You know, the Lord Himself is the one that shines through us. We're, we're just simply an instrument of righteousness you know, for His glory. It's, in verse 9, I love this verse, and it, it reminded me of um, over in Galatians chapter 6 where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It says, For the, spru- the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You know, thank God you know, for people of God that are really doing the work of God and they're doing it because they're full of the Spirit of God and they're producing the fruit of the Spirit, you know. And if you want to, just flip a couple of pages back in your Bible there in in Galatians chapter 6. And I want to read those to you right quick. I think it's Galatians chapter 5, I'm sorry. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You know, and I can remember when, when Unity passed away, that was the scripture that the Lord gave me to use at, at her graveside service. And, you know, what a blessing, you know, to know people that are, that are examples and really producing the fruit of the Spirit in their life. It says, proven, verse 10, proven what is acceptable unto the Lord. I'm not trying to, any, any preacher or pastor or anything like that, we're not trying to prove what's acceptable to us. Okay, this is not about us. You go back to the Sunday school lesson, it, it needs to be about the Lord Jesus and about God the Father and about what's acceptable unto them, you know, and unto, unto Him, our Lord. It's not about us. It never should be about us, nor it will ever be about us. In all glory, in all eternity, we'll not be up there praising anything that we've done, but we'll be praising God for what He done through Christ Jesus our Lord. And verse 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. In other words, you need to expose the works of darkness. We need to we need to let people know that that the devil is at work and what he's doing is is really messing people up. 
It says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, uh, me and Derek talked about this before. You know, there's sin in that, that I've, in my life, that's been committed that you don't know nothing about. And vice versa, there's sin in your life that I don't know nothing about. But only God Himself knows about that. You know, and but only God Himself can forgive us of that sin. You know, um, the Bible does say, you know, confess your faults one to another and you shall be healed. You know, and, and a lot of times that's a lot of times the faults we have with one another maybe. You know, and in fact the Bible encourages if you at all with your brother, you need to go to him and make things right with him. You know, you know, so that there's nothing different. You know, so that there's no division between the brothers. You know, and you know, thank God we can do that. You know, um, verse thirteen says, "But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light." In other words, if you expose the darkness. It, the reason it's been exposed is because the light has shined upon the darkness and exposed it. Okay, in other words, if you've exposed some kind of evil of the devil or in the world, it's because the light of the Lord Jesus Christ has shined and exposed that. Whether it be in my life, whether it be in your life, it'll be because God, the the light, His Son Jesus Christ, exposed that to us and helped us understand that. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light, it says. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You know, I, I hope and pray that we're not none of us like um, Agent Rogers said, and I mentioned in the Sunday school lesson, I hope and pray that we're not like a bunch of pew potatoes. You know, he, he preached that one message and he talked about how people are... Um, they're pseudo Christians, you know. They're they're all they all look like a Christian on the outside, and they you know a lot of times they'll say the right words, and seemingly they're a Christian. They'll go to church, and they'll dress up, and they'll do this, but there's no fruit of the real Christianity in their life whatsoever. There's no no place in their life where they've stepped out in faith and done anything for the Lord. You know, um, I pray to God that we're not like it. But he says, "Awake, thou that sleepest." and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. If there's anything to be done, if we're going to do, be able to do anything, it'll be because Christ Jesus worked in us and worked through us and gave us the strength and the ability and the words to say to do it. Then it goes on in verse 15 here. It says, "Redeeming or See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, and if you'll look over in your uh, column there, when it says circumspectly, that means to walk carefully. Let me read that again. It says, See then that you walk carefully, or circumspectly, it says, not as fools, but as wise. It, you know what that tells me? I don't know what it tells you, but it, it means that wherever I go, Wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing, I need to make sure I'm watching what I say or what I do. You know, I think all the time up there when I'm working sometimes, and, I, and I'm sure Daniel's probably like me. He, he probably gets upset sometimes. And maybe he, you know, throws a wrench down or, or ha a hammer or something that he shouldn't be hammering or, or something like that. But my prayer is that, I, Lord, don't let me say something, you know, that would discourage somebody or kill anything about my testimony that people would hear it or see me do anything that would be foolish. But Lord, help me walk wisely and help me make the right choices. You know, help me um, when people come by there, if people are there, whoever it might be, and I tell people this all the time, and I know I've told some of you here, especially at my work, don't, I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about politics. If I, if I want to hear anything about politics, I'll, I'll turn the news on because it's all over the news. You know, and you know, please spare me the time uh, of talking about stuff like it. Let's talk about something that's worth talking about. Let's talk about the Lord. You know, talk about His Word. Talk about how good God is and how good He's been to us. You know, uh, but we need to walk circumspectly, not as fools. See, a fool... He don't even know what he's saying a lot of times. They utter stuff out 
and they don't know what they're saying. You know, um, God help us, but help us to be wise, it says in that verse. And then verse 16, and, and literally this verse was the one that's been on my heart. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, there ain't no doubt about it in my mind. We all know that the time we're living in is evil. Um, people say, well, it's, you know, and yeah, we have, we are living in really good times as far as financially. Nobody in here, I don't think, is financially hurting. You know, I know some are, are maybe more uh, blessed than others financially, but we've all had our needs met somehow by God's grace and mercy. And we've all had meals on the tables. And we've all got, as far as I know, we've all got roofs over our heads. You know, we've been blessed beyond all, you know, all measure, you know, by God Himself. I looked up that word redeeming, you know, and if, you, if you'll remember, I think it was in, uh, in Ruth when Boaz bought back, you know, he was the kinsman redeemer, if you'll remember, and he bought back, you know, Ruth where she, she was a widow, you know, and he was the next in line, uh, really wasn't the next in line, but he was the one that bought her back and redeemed her, you know, and that's what we look at a lot of times. But I looked it up in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, which Webster's ain't got the greatest uh, uh, explanations for words all the time, but it, I thought it sounded pretty good. And it, if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, it says serving to offset or compensate for a defect. In other words, you know, it's not that we can buy any time back. What's in the past is in the past. What happened yesterday happened yesterday. There's nothing we can do about that. But what, we're going, what we need to do right now is make the very best of every moment we have in the time that we have now. It's not that we can expect to do so many great things in the future because we may not have another breath. But what we have is today, we have the hour and the minute and the breath that we have now. And we need to make the very best of everything that we're doing in, in our lives. We need to make the very best of our, of our witness to people. You know, we need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do. Me and Brother Derek were talking this morning, and he was talking about he is so exhausted right now because of all the things that's been going on. With, you know, we know, you know, my family knows about how it is with your mother. Um, he's dealing with that right now. And right now, as, as a church, if we're going to redeem the time and do what we're supposed to do, we need to be loving on Him and supporting Him through this. And we need to remember that, you know, at the same time, we've got a lot of stuff to do. You know, we need to make the very best of what God's given us with all that we have. It, it, yeah, it's exhausting, and a lot of people are, most of us are exhausted. But praise God, God will give us the strength to do the things that He wants us to do. He'll give us the understanding of it. The Bible says over in the Old Testament that it's better to obey than to sacrifice. It's better, it's better if we go ahead and do what the Lord wants us to do and um, try to live by the leadership of the Holy Ghost doing everything He asked us to do in obedience and accordance to God's Word, not in the way we feel. A lot of times we base it on how we feel. And yes, these bodies get exhausted. We get worn out and we have to rest. And praise God, we, God gives us a rest and He gives us opportunity to do that. You know, but while we have energy and while we have breath, we need to make the best of everything in life. We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Now, if you don't think that we're living in evil times, evidently you don't watch absolutely no news whatsoever. Because... Um, I don't care what side of the fence they're running on. Uh, there's evil all around our world today right now. Um, the people of God are being attacked by every corner. Um, um, not only that, our nation, look at our nation, how wicked and ungodly our nation is. We just got through talking about that in the Sunday school lesson, how that that temple up there in, it said Robbinsville, New Jersey, had been it was the second largest Hindu temple built, and had thousands of uh, idols that they worshipped in that temple. 
That's in our nation. You know, and I could go on and on about stuff like that. There's uh, just, just in our nation's capital, okay, there's temples built uh, that worship other things than God, okay? You know, and in New York City alone, you know, there's some big places there that worship, you know, it, whether it's Muslim or Islam, whatever it might be. You know, it's all in our nation, everywhere you go. And not only that, there's probably more people at home today and probably tonight they'll be watching some kind of ball game, um, worshiping a ball, you know. Uh, they, they still worship Baal, they just say it, they just spell it different. They, they, they spell it B-A-L-L instead of B-A-I-L. You know, um, and, that, and that's going on all over the world today. It's not just in our nation, not just in our city, not in our, not in our state, but it's all over. And that, you wonder why we need to make the best of the time that we have. We have got to make the redeem the time that we have. Let me read the, the rest of these verses in closing here. It says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, we need to understand something. God is not willing, the Bible says, that any should perish. Okay, it, so if He's not willing that any should perish, then His will is that all men be saved, you know, in all the world. You know, He didn't die just for the, the country folk in the mountains of Carolina. He died for all mankind. It don't matter what color, race, or background they come from. He died for every one of them. You know, Brother, Brother Al and his wife there, they've been overseas to some of these countries and on these mission trips and stuff. And... They've seen stuff that I've never seen before. And, and there's people over there that are starving to death for the Word of God. And, they're, and thank God they're being saved when they hear the Word of God, when they trust God, you know. But it's all over the world people need Jesus, okay? It, it's not just here in our little circle. It's all around the world. And, and it's His will that people be saved. And it's His will that if you're not saved, that you be saved. He says... And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Now, people tell me all the time, well, there's nothing in the Bible that says that you shouldn't be, shouldn't drink and all this and that and the other. And they, they try to give every excuse in the world for drinking. Just like we said in the Sunday school lesson, they become what they worship. You know, a drunkard, he becomes a drunkard because he worships alcohol. Okay? That's what his, his main focus is, is because he's worshiping that alcohol. And it, just like we said this morning, it's not, it's not that beer, okay, that, that's behind it all. It's, it's a, a demon from the very pits of hell that is causing people to do that. And, and it's a sin that's associated with that, that uh, idol worship. He goes on and says, "...be not drunk with wine wherein is excess." but be filled with the Spirit, with a capital S. Talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You know, boy, it's easy, it's easy to say it a lot of times. A lot of people say, oh, I'm full of Spirit, or you know, this and that and the other, or I feel the Spirit. You know, people say, tell me too many times, that, you know, I, I want to go somewhere where I can feel the Spirit. Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. If you're saved, you ought to be able to feel and be, have the Spirit of God in you wherever you're at. It don't matter where you're at. And you can ask Brother Al, I'm sure when he goes overseas on them mission trips, praise God, you don't base it on feelings, you base it on fact and faith in the Word of God. You know, um, you know, praise God for the Spirit of God that indwells us. In other words, He moves in us, and when He moves in, He don't move out. He don't come and go like He did in the Old Testament. You know, He came and go, His presence came and went in the Old Testament. You know, and ever since the New Testament, when, when Jesus died on the cross, He sent the Comforter. You know, it's like we were talking about, he's, he's a paraclete. He walks beside us you know, everywhere we go, and He's living in us, you know, in our hearts, and telling us the direction we should go. He says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, this, uh, the piano, the lessons I've been taking and stuff, Y'all don't know it, but and I know my mama probably 
she probably wonders what her dog's barking at a lot of times about 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. Um, it's probably me down there practicing a little bit because I'm bad to practice right before I go to bed. And, but what joy it brings to me to be able to do that. Even if it's just a bunch of noise, it, it brings joy in my heart. You know? And you ought to be able to sing stuff. You ought to be able to sing a song in your heart to yourself or out loud, however it might be. And it ought to bring peace you know, and joy. And you know, the presence of God ought to be revived in your life. It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the God. Now, the, the title of this message is Redeeming the Time. And it, there's a very good reason why we should redeem the time. Because one day, there's an angel that is going to step out and he's going to say something here. And I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 10, if you will. Now, I don't understand everything about the book of Revelation. I do know that we're going to be leaving out of here somewhere around chapter 4 or right before chapter 4 by the rapture, I believe, you know, of the church. And and there's going to be a lot of things happen after the rapture comes. And and there's going to be a lot of people left behind that are lost and they'll probably uh, die lost. Um, I don't know how... Everything's going to go. I wish I knew. I wish I could explain everything about it. But I can't. But I know God knows. But I do know this, that one day we'll not have no time. Time will be no more, the Bible says. Uh, But in verses 5 and 6, the Bible says this in Revelation chapter 10. It says, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, which is God Almighty, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Who created heaven, and the things that are therein are, and the earth. Now think about that. Let me back up a little bit. He said, Who created heaven. You know, we look up in the sky and we see the clouds and the stars and the moon. Boy, that moon the other night was just as pretty and bright and when we left here Wednesday night, you could see that big full moon. You could see the... I told Derek, you look, you could see the man and the moon up there. You know, you could see it look like the eyes and the, and the mouth. And, you know, praise God, you know, um, God created all that. You know, it, he goes on and says, Who created heaven and the things that are therein are? And he says, And the earth and the things that therein are. Now, think about all the things that's on land that we know that God created. He created all the animals, the giraffe. He created the hippopotamus. He created the little butterflies that fly around and all the parasites that we can't see and you know the microscopic organisms that we can't see. Um, and God created all for His glory. And you know the Bible says that creation itself you know, praises Him and, and declares the glory of the Lord. You know. um, and it, not only that, he created all man. You know, it's, it says all things that are in the earth. And it goes on and says, and the sea and the things which are therein. Think about all the stuff that's in the sea. All the big whales, all the big uh, horse fish or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they, they species in the sea that man has never seen and never discovered. Every year they're discovering different species of different types of fish and uh, different types of sea, uh, wildlife, whatever they call it, and organisms that are down there, you know, and there's depths of the sea that man has never been to. You know, thank God the Bible says that He cast our sins in the depths of the sea, you know, um, where no man can come and can go get it. You know, thank God. But that last part of that verse, He says that He claims and says this. He says that there should be time no longer. You know, uh, it hadn't been too long ago. I, I believe it was here, or it might have been another church. I guess it was. The Lord gave me a message about uh, time and about how it's not going to it's not going to last. Um, one of these days, you, me, everybody that you know, everybody that you've ever known, will eventually take their last breath here. You know, and and 
right now, truth is, there's a lot of people now probably laying in a hospital bed or maybe in a nursing home probably thinking in their mind if they, if they can think, if, they, if they've got a mind to think, they might be thinking, boy, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. I wish I could go to church again like my, church, my family did. I wish I could go see my friends, my family. I wish I could tell my, my children I love them one more time. You know, wished I could go see my mama. Wished I could do this. Wished I could go do this with my daddy. You know, wished I could tell somebody that there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Wished I could do one more thing. Wished I could say, you know, my testimony, share my testimony with somebody. You know, you hear this all the time from Jeff and Derek. You may not have the greatest testimony. You may not have a big, long, drawn-out testimony. You may not have a, a, a... And it may not be real attractive to, to people. I don't know. You, or you may seemingly think it not not be. That I've, 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 I'll be honest with you. Of the people I know here, some of you people are some of the humblest people I know, and some of your testimonies are special to me. You know, because they've touched my heart. You know, and shame on us, shame on me, if I don't share my testimony enough. Shame on me if I don't speak to somebody. You know, just a couple of weeks ago out here Sunday evening after church, I didn't know for sure who the guy was, but there was a guy pulled up here on a bicycle, and, and Derek mentioned it, I think that maybe that Sunday night or that Wednesday night after that, that that guy had been to my shop and... I remember, but I remember the guy after I seen, after I realized who it was. I remember who he was. He'd come up there and pulled in there and introduced himself, told me where he lived and stuff. And, you know, we got, and there was somebody else there with me. I forget who it was. But we got in a conversation there and I invited him to church, you know, and I gave him a card from the church, you know. And I tried my best to share the gospel with him, you know. And it showed up a little bit because he pulled up right out here and asked about what was going on here in the church, you know. Maybe, just maybe, it don't matter who it is. Um, maybe me, maybe you, maybe you need to talk to somebody. Maybe you need to tell somebody about Jesus today. You know, I tell you what, I, I wished I could uh, wave a magic wand and just put time at a standstill and, and everything would be hunky dory and nothing would ever happen. And, you know, we, we'd have all the time in the world to do whatever it is we want to do. But that's not the case. We, we've got right now, and we better make the best of the time. We better redeem the time because the days are evil.